Three, two, one, go. There are five cases five. from BuzzFeed Unsolved which have now either been fully or significantly solved. And we're going to begin by looking at Forest Fen's treasure. Oh yeah, that's the one by the, the land on the beach, bro. I want to see that one bad. Brad and Shane investigated the mystery two years prior in September 2008. Don't you remember he's like laid up on the beach the with, and they found like something in his pocket that was like from the Bible? Treasure chest somewhere in the Rocky mm. Mountains. You remember that? A million dollars worth of valuable antiquities. In Forest we Fair, watched that one. He wrote a 24-line poem which included nine hidden clues on how to find the treasure. And while the I do like real life treasure simple, hunts. So. Over 65,000 people had attempted. Oh yeah, and they attempted to go field. find it. Brian and Shane then explained that the treasure could be found in one of four specific. U.S. states. The treasure is located in either Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, or New Mexico. Of the yeah, only one of four states, states it could be in, possibly. <laughs> or Wyoming. Wyoming, because a majority of Yellowstone National Park resides within that state. And Yellowstone was a place where Fenn spent his formative years camping with his father. And although Wyoming is the most likely location for the treasure, the boys eventually settled on looking in New Mexico, flying to the state with over a month's worth of research under their belt. Ryan and Shane looked at three different locations in New Mexico, put up with bad weather and rough terrain, and at one point even thought that they had found the treasure. That right there. <laughs> I found the treasure that exists for real. Is that a box or just a very square rock? That is a very, very square rock. Idiot. He found a square rock, bro. That's the most valuable possession. I love a square rock. And the location of Forest Fen's treasure remained. Imagine the the treasures in one of four states, bro. And they thought they found it. When the following post was made, they got the number one pick. It was under a canopy of stars in the lush forest of vegetation of the Rocky Mountains and had not moved from the spot where I hid it more than 10 years ago. I what? do not know the person who found it, but the poem in my book led him to the precise spot. I congratulate the thousands of people who participated in the search. Wait, who died to make this happen or no one died? Discoveries. So the search I have no idea. Will look for more information and photos in the coming days. Forest. As promised, this photo Gold doubloons. in the days that followed. The doubloons. The were also posted, confirming that the treasure had in fact been found one month later it was revealed that the treasure oh, he's got to say it Wyoming, found he's got to put that fucking the extra the emphasis on it <laughs> went to six months later in went to the person who had found the treasure finally revealed himself as 32 year old medical student jack stew let's go jack used to be one of buzzfeed's writers jack had found out about the case in uh, it was someone on the same team he could have led them to it but he was keeping it for himself <laughs> Every day since he learned about it, also adding that he planned on selling the treasure to pay off his student loans. The treasure went wow. on the Wow, what a great investment! I found the treasure of fucking the century. I'm gonna sell it. I'm the treasure of man. I mean, yeah. So probably, I mean, you kind of have to at that point. Oh, that's... I feel like you could put it to a little more. Maybe. With the major details being that in 1957, a box was found on the side of a road in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which contained the body of a boy between four and six years old. Oh, that's one's fucked. Uh, I don't remember watching that one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching that one. <laughs> yeah, we did, did we? No. Really it was I, th I feel like the one where that we watch is like one about a boy and he freaking went missing. And like the mother thought it was him. I know, I, I know. I think I watched Boy in a Box on my own. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. Or That gave me a cringe to hear America's Unknown Child. I imagine that's you. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Hell no. No. The victim's DNA was so degraded that it took two and a half years of work to be able to extract enough data to perform the genealogy. On the 8th of December 2012, Philadelphia. The box was identified as Joseph Augustus Zarelli. His DNA was uploaded to the databases, which led detectives to relatives on his mother's side. After pouring through birth records, they were also able to identify his father they also learned that zarelli's mother had three other children why is he in a box though on who killed zarelli though they noted we have our suspicions meaning that while this identification is extremely that gave me a cringe too they said we won't investigate but we have our suspicions bro. what however if we're on the top
solving uh, specifications, then we not have to cops the being shot. Oh, yeah, we're not going to investigate, but they could have did it. We should investigate, but we days before the boy in the box. When Ryan and Shane looked into the Lady of the Dunes back in March 2012, she was found deceased on a beach in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Is that the one who got cooked alive with perks in her stomach? The Lady of the Dunes had become unidentifiable. Despite using bloodhounds, studying missing persons bulletins, scouring the registers of local lodgings, and looking into anyone who had a permit to bring their vehicle into the area, police turned up nothing. The Lady of the Dunes also had was she a spy? Dental work. However, despite that this, was a, numerous uh, different police like sketches. A, was like that a different one? Yeah. Was. Similar it to was the theory. boy in the box, the Lady of the Dunes was exhumed for DNA on three separate like occasions in 1980 and 2013. Killed, I killed her, so. Although none of these resulted in her identification, leading the boys to state that. Oh, no, I think that that's the one that was burned kind of up. That was like burned. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She had like mad perks in her stomach. Yeah, but she was also burned. And that's what I didn't know. And she had like a secret she name. Was she was also burned and stuff. Yeah, like nothing made sense. The spy theory. I'm about to get an ad right at the good part. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got one for six seconds or no? Six seconds, yeah. Let's let it go. Let Just it let it rock. Let's let it rock. Ooh, uh, I just want to rock. On October 31st, the FBI announced it finally identified the woman as Ruth Marie Terry, a native of Tennessee. Well, you're back in. 37 at the time of her death. Yeah. At the time All of right, her disappearance, good. Ruth Marie Terry had Don't mentioned to family seconds. that she was traveling to Massachusetts with her husband, Guy Moldalvin, who's now become the main, oh, the main suspect, suspect in the case. Despite being married at the time, Guy never officially reported the disappearance of his wife. To Real? <laughs> Conveniently <laughs> being married a year later as if nothing Conveniently. Happened. Even crazy that that conveniently previous just wife had also happened. gone missing and was eventually found dead alongside his daughter inside a septic tank on Guy's Yeah, home. no, he yeah, that guy was fucked. Prison before being released. That guy was fucked. Marie Terry, who was then found in the dunes only five months later. Guy oh Moore my god. In 2002. However, if he, is he lived a fine, happy life. <laughs> Ryan and Shane were correct in suggesting yeah. this. He, he was perfectly all right. He was not an amateur for sure. <laughs> he was not an amateur. <laughs> he was practicing. Done by an Italian mob boss or schizophrenic prison inmate Haddon Clark. However, in the case of Amelia Earhart, one of the theories put forward by the boys eventually turned out to be true. Ryan and Shane explained that Amelia Earhart was trying to become the first woman to fly around the world. However, on the stretch between Papua New Guinea and the Howland Islands in the South Papua Pacific, New Guinea. Amelia Earhart, her navigator Frank worst Newman, place to be. As well as their plane vanished and were never found. My mom's boyfriend grew up there. The theory put forward in the Is it horrible? Episode was that Earhart's plane had run mm, out of fuel. Yeah. And crashed into Dude, the you don't want to be in Papua New Guinea, bro. His parents had money. Yeah. Pacific Island was or it's, it's for the a jungle. Crash landing was that two years after Earhart's disappearance, and now it's not Dutch New Guinea. He grew up in. And there's only two of them. Sexton and a partial human skeleton. A sexton, it's a sexton. <laughs> One <laughs> sexton. Concluded that they most likely belong to a male who was short, stocky, and of European descent. You can tell that from the sexton. Belong to Earhart. However, Ryan went on to explain that at a later date, the bones have been run through an updated database. Which suggested that they could have belonged to a tall woman of European descent, which fit the description oh, really? of Earhart perfectly. Well, approximately a year after the BuzzFeed Unsolved episode was uploaded, an article popped up on NPR.org titled New Research Claims Bones Found 80 Years Ago on Pacific Atoll, Likely Amelia Earhart's, which explained that the bones Damn. had been run through Modern Ancestry Program 4 Disc, which found that Hoodless had incorrectly determined the sex of the remains. The data revealed that the bones have more similarity to Earhart than to 99 percent of individuals in a large reference sample it's a bit of a stretch to call the case that's a large Earhart reference sample <laughs> on a couple within of a large reference sample. bones however they're significantly this is the good one for the person this is the good one he just gave us some episode. mid to give us this Sometimes banger right here finally identified in july 2022 mm -hmm. after 74 years of mystery the summerton man was found dead on a beach in adelaide australia back in 1940 crippled children's home in a full is that a fucking thing you can go to a crippled enough, children's home. Not anymore, but it used to be, yeah.
Yeah, yeah nowadays they don't give a fuck about crippled children. Found sewn into his pants with a Persian Fun way to put it. Should written on it, which translated oh yeah, this is the thing from the Bible, yeah. Reaching even deeper levels of weird when someone yeah, it's a spy in guy. the paper had been torn, explaining that he found the book in the They found him sitting on the what's it called? Beach. When the boys revisited the case, oh yeah, then so, someone like brings the book and he's like, I found this book. Who was seemingly the most God gave me this book, and it was the God book. Gave me <laughs> Well, it will be only two years and three Like he's got a Cardi birthmark on his cheek. Mm. <laughs> he's a genius. Reggie Carter. This is Reggie Carter. <laughs> And um, there was one that stood out. By using the DNA of a distant cousin living in Melbourne, Derek Abbott was finally able to confirm that the Somerton man went by the name of Charles Webb. It was at Charles this Webb. point that we knew that Charles Sounds Webb Sounds like a fake was name. The Somerton man, and we'd finally cracked it. It's not the Somerton man story now. This is the Charles Webb story. The theories put forward in the BuzzFeed Unsolved episodes, such as uh, the Summerton Man was a Russian spy or a ballet dancer, were disproven. A ballet dancer? <laughs> Either of those, a Russian spy or a ballet dancer. on the weekend. However, the other tragic detail revealed in the episode of Australian Story was that prior to being found on the beach, the Summerton man was living an incredibly lonely life. Mm. Didn't have any friends. So it makes sense that he and, fucking... Uh, turns out that Charles loved to write he wasn't a spy. Himself. He, he really did yeah. overdose the and then burn himself alive. Wild spy drama. Um, it's really a, a sad, tragic... Ah, oh, not a banger anymore. God I damn it. <laughs> he ruined the good one. He wasn't a spy. He was a depressed man who... <laughs> we should have just left it up to the imagination. Burned himself.